What we want to talk to you about today is optical phenomena. And optical phenomena in the gemstone world basically means some sort of exceptional visual effect, either within the stone or on the surface of the stone. So we're going to go through 10 different optical phenomena, and we're going to talk about why they occur, how it happens, and show you some pretty cool specimens today. Can I read the clue? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. From Italian meaning by chance. Ooh. So we have three specimens. Optical phenomenon number one, aventurescence. Comes from the Italian aventura. There you go. So aventurescence is an optical phenomenon that occurs due to reflections from internal particles in a gemstone. This right here is something called organ sunstone. It's a type of feldspar. Hopefully you can see that it has this reddish orangey kind of glow to it. Those are copper inclusions. The inclusions have to be grouped together in a certain way to produce this effect in abundance. This one tricked me because at first glance, I definitely thought it was strawberry quartz. It does look like it. So this is not strawberry quartz, but an equally tasty name, cinnamon sunstone. It doesn't have copper on the inside, it has hematite on the inside, which is an iron oxide. So hematite, obviously, is highly metallic, which means it's highly reflective. Mm -hmm. So you have light going in, bouncing off of the inclusions, and then reflecting back. This plate is something that is is called goldstone glass. This is a synthetic material. It's a lot more overtly, I mean, in your face. Yeah, it's intense, but that also means that it's really easy to identify. As you can see, the platelets are extremely numerous. There's hardly a spot that doesn't include this type of aventurescence. Is this meant to imitate Oregon sunstone? It is. Like, I, well, I, keep I, at it, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. What okay, you can, you can read that card. From French, meaning cat's eye. I know this one. We're talking about chatoyancy. Yeah. Oh. Very I nice. I like this guy. Very nice. I like all of these guys. That's dramatic. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay, this is really cool. We'll try to get a close up for you. This guy is cat's eye silimonite. This one is really interesting. It has three cat's eyes, but they're really cool because when you turn it, they like blend into one and right. then they As, separate. Yeah, that's a striking cat's eye. It does kind of play with your eye a little bit. So chatoyancy is an optical phenomenon that occurs due to numerous parallel inclusions inside a stone. Right, these inclusions are importantly thin and fibrous. And they have to be oriented in the same direction. Right. And then the actual eye effect is perpendicular to those inclusions. And you also often have to cut the stone in cabochon to create this kind of dome. Tiger's eye is one of the Shintoyan gems that doesn't require being cut in cabochon. So you can see this is a flat slice. Just polished. I think tiger's eye is a really fun stone. It's a type of quartz. It's like this golden glow, like a tiger's eye. The inclusions are asbestos replaced by quartz. So it's totally fine to hold it near your face. <laughs> From Greek meaning a marking with stars. Well, I, I mean, I have a pretty good guess. Yeah, I think we know. And you guys probably do too, so let's see. That is so pretty. I see sapphire. I never see 12 braid stars. 12? This is over 15 carats, a Sri Lankan star sapphire with 12 rays. The Too fiber optic pen. light is gonna be really cool. Oh, do we cool. want the fiber? Oh my gosh. I haven't used this guy this since. This is cool. This star-like effect is dun 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 dun. Asterism. It's like chatoyancy plus. Yeah, it, in a it way. is chatoyancy plus. So what we're doing here is we're using a fiber optic light, which is a very intense kind of pinpoint of light because this type of effect is best seen when your stone is illuminated overhead. And look how long those rays go. They go all the they way, they're edge to edge. They go all the way edge. to the base. For simplicity's sake, I'm gonna draw a six rayed star. But essentially what happens is you have oriented needle inclusions in roughly three different directions. And then when you cut your stone in cabochon, your star effect is going to reflect 
perpendicular to each one of those inclusions. So it's actually pretty simple. A lot of star sapphires are heat treated to really bring out the star effect. The cool thing about this gemstone, according to its ID, it doesn't have any evidence of having been heated. So it's like totally natural. It, it, it woke up like this. <laughs> I think it's my turn to read the clue. Oh, go for it. Oh, okay. Latin for rainbow. Rainbow, Latin. Latin. For rainbow. I'm sure we I know, have. I know in Spanish it's arco iris. Arc, arco, and oh. then iris. Oh, ir color, iridescence. Ooh. What do we have in this bag, do you think? It looks like amylite. Amylite is really cool. It actually is fossilized from the animal ammonite. So these little fossilized shells are composed primarily of aragonite, which is also found in pearls. The optical phenomenon we're seeing here is something called iridescence. And iridescence is actually a general term that is used to describe a series of colors that is produced by diffraction and interference when light rays are reflected or diffracted through multiple layers in a material. And so you have things like amylite that have different layers to their structure. These different layers have different thicknesses and different refractive indices. And what happens is light goes through and interacts differently based off of the RI, the thickness of the layers. It reflects, it refracts, the light rays interfere and it produces a different set of colors and it can be all colors of the rainbow. Have you got a favorite piece? I really like this one. Like I like some the variety of the lizard in this, skin but I, I like the spotted ones. Yeah. Ooh, wait. Okay. No, I don't like that one. What? It's like blue green. It doesn't have enough red. It doesn't need Well, okay. Just English, but it sounds like fun. Fun. What are fun things? When you were a kid, what was the fun time? Playing outside was fun. Playing Super Smash Brothers. Play. Play. Play of color. color. Opal. There it is. This is an Ethiopian opal. So play of color is a very specific type of iridescence. Play of color occurs due to the structure of an opal. Opal is comprised of a series of regularly repeating stacked silica spheres. There are gaps between those spheres that light goes through and it diffracts the light. And then it goes through a series of reflection and interference and the relative size and arrangement of the spheres dictates the type of patterns and the type of colors that occur. Often with synthetics, you have like very specific sections of color and they don't really collide with one another. With natural opals, they kind of gel a little bit more, but there is an opal pattern called Harlequin, where you do have these kind of like geometric sort of cells sections, of color. Yeah. Cells of color. Most people would refer to that when talking about black opal, but this opal does have these kind of patches of color. So I do I do see them overlapping though. This opal has every color you could expect from an opal. It's got blues and purples, it's got red and oranges, and it's got greens, and they're all kind of all kind of dancing together. This is an exceptional opal. Okay, number six. Cool. Another English term whose meaning couldn't be clearer. Let's just open it. Ooh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It I know what equipment. this is. You know what it is? Yeah. This is one of my favorite optical phenomena. This phenomenon is color change. I love talking about color and how light interacts and why we see the colors that we see. In fact, we've done a video all about color that you can go check out. As you can see, in this light, this gemstone, which is fluorite, is like a pretty standard blue. And the reason why we see this blue color has to do with the light in the surroundings and then how light is absorbed in the gemstone and returning back to our eyes. Gems absorb some wavelengths of light and they transmit other wavelengths of light. What happens with color change gemstones is the transmission windows in these gemstones are equal in different parts of the spectrum. And so depending on the light source, they will display a different color. So for cooler light sources, they're going to transmit cooler colors. With the warmer light, so think like incandescent lights, these gems are going to transmit warmer colors. This flashlight is great for this because it 
uh, allows us to shine it with different colors. Oh, look at that. It's dramatic, isn't it? Blue, purple, blue, purple. Yeah, color change is so cool. It originally was found in the gemstone alexandrite, and so traditionally has been called the alexandrite effect, but is more well known today as color change. All right, let's see. This word comes from a Canadian region named after a Portuguese explorer whose name meant farmer. I bet it's Labradorite from oh, Canada. Yeah, that's a good guess. Yeah. Ooh. I Which, like that guy. Oh, that's a big, oh my God. This is Labradorite, also known as Spectrolite, named after Labrador, Canada. The effect of course is named after the stone, Labradorite, and the effect is called Labradorescence. So Labradorescence is another type of iridescence that occurs due to the structural layer. So Labradorite is a type of feldspar. The feldspar, feldspar. group is a huge group and they form what's called an isomorphous series, meaning that there can be replacement of atoms within types of feldspars that make their chemistry very complex. A lot of feldspars have many layers of different types of feldspar. Labradorite in particular are made up of calcium rich and sodium rich types of feldspars. And what happens when it grows is these layers kind of settle into place and form different lamellae, which are like parallel planes. And so that's actually often why labradorite will look kind of striated and like fractured. And then due to the different thicknesses and the different RIs of the calcium rich and the sodium rich layers, it produces a series of colors. And most often you're gonna get these greens and these blues. I love labradorite, very pretty stuff. <laughs> Go for it. From Italian, name originally comes from a group of mountains. I'm not gonna lie to you, that clue has left me stumped. Can we yeah, open the box? Yeah, I don't know that. Yeah, let's open the box. Ooh. Oh, speaking of feldspar, I think this narrows it down quite a bit. I think we're talking about agilorescence. Yes, I would agree with you there. Now that I know that, I can pull this information from my mind. The effect got its name from the old term used for moonstone, which was adularia, which itself in turn borrowed its name from the Adula Mountains, a range of mountains in Switzerland, but that's the Italian name for the mountain. I don't know about the Confusing. history or reasoning for that, but basically it's named after an Italian name for a Swiss mountain. <laughs> And that's all you need to know. So adularescence is an optical phenomenon that is often described as a soft billowy sheen that kind of glides over a gemstone. It gets this effect due to a process called scattering where light hits the internal layers and then gets reflected off of them. Adularescence can occur specifically to two different types of gemstones. One is moonstone, which is a type of feldspar, and then one that's called rainbow moonstone, which is also a type of feldspar, but confusingly is actually a type of labradorite. The difference is that regular moonstone has the blue and the rainbow moonstone just has more color. So this is a rainbow moonstone that we have here, correct? Yes. But this is only blue. It's actually really difficult to differentiate between the two because sometimes rainbow moonstone has very subtle colors other than that blue. I just see blue. That, that, this, is a, this is actually a really hard one. It is pretty, but a rainbow it is not. It's not a rainbow, that's true. From Latin word meaning to flow. I, I'm not gonna get this. Really not a language gal. Okay, let's open it. <laughs> a small blue gemstone. And a flashlight. Ooh, we know what that is. Yes, yes, yes. I am a language guy, so actually I, it makes this. sense now. So fluorite, before anyone understood that it fluoresced, it was used as a flux in the ancient world which is where the, the Latin to flow comes into play here. Fluorite was one of the first gems that they noticed fluoresce. Fluoresce, exactly. Right? So the effect is named after fluorite, which is named after its flowiness because it was used as a flux in the ancient world. Got so, it. So very cool. Love it. But this is not fluorite. So this is actually a gemstone called afghanite. 
named after the locality at which it was found, Afghanistan. A lot of gemstones are found in Afghanistan. And it possesses fluorescence. Fluorescence is the emission of visible light when something is excited by a source of higher energy radiation. So our higher energy, shorter wavelength light of choice is ultraviolet today. So light is a form of energy, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And so what happens when you hit the gem with higher energy wavelengths like UV, the stone can only release less energy than what hit it, right? So like if I, if I punch you, there's no way that whatever energy that's released from the punch is more than the energy that I hit you with, right? So you have to absorb some energy and then the release of energy is whatever is left over. It's going to emit some of that energy at a lower frequency, a color in the visible light spectrum. So before you zap it, what do we think the color is gonna be? I'm going green again. I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna say red. I, uh, I want green. Ah, oh, it's like an orange yeah. kind of color. Oh wow, it's quite orange. Oh. Yeah, check that out. So it goes from blue to orange. We were both wrong. I love that. Light is cool. Good. We got one last box, one last phenomenon. From Greek, yes, <laughs> meaning to bear light. Okay. Okay, well we just did fluorescence, so I'm gonna take a wild guess and say that we are gonna talk about phosphorescence. Ooh, little green, Ooh, little guy. green dude. This is something that our good friend Claire is letting us borrow for today. It's called Nightstone, which sounds like something out of, you know, Skyrim or something like that. It is man made, it's synthetic, and it's like 90% strontium. We just had our lab technicians test it. It has radioactive elements in it, although it did not respond to a Geiger counter, so we're okay, good. Okay, good. So, fluorescence. The stone will glow, but only under continuous exposure to that light. Phosphorescence differs in that the glowing from the stone will continue after you stop exposing it to that light source, which is crazy. It's, a, it's glow in the dark, basically. So we are going to hit it with the fiber optic, which is a very concentrated pinpoint light. I got my finger on you the You ready? Button. Yep. We're gonna just microwave this real quick for maybe five, 10 seconds. That's all it takes. Okay. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, eight Mississippi, nine Mississippi, ten. Okay. Oh Go for my god. It's glowing green. It, it was green like earlier, but neon. it's neon. It's like. It's actually kind of warm to the touch. It looks radioactive now. It does look radioactive, and I can't believe I'm touching it. That is so cool. And it's still going. Yeah. So this is phosphorescing. So it is emitting a certain type of light after, after exposure. After the light's cut off. Yeah. So man-made, but very cool. Really cool. Okay, so we gotta take a closer look at one of these. What was your favorite? I know mine. Okay, which? No, I wanna wait to hear yours. Why do we can't double pick? Well, that's the interesting thing. We'll see if we have the same one. I doubt okay. we will. One, two, three. Oh, cool. Okay, my favorite was the 12th grade star sapphire. I think that is incredible, especially when the pen light hits it. Untreated, Untreated all natural. Untreated 15 carats. It's gorgeous. That's all good and well, but <laughs> opal. Opal's fun. I mean, look, every color you could want in an opal. And it's big too, it's nice and large. Mm -hmm. But mine's better. Rebecca, thank you very much for explaining all of those phenomena. You did a very good job, very clear and concise. Was I erudite? You were even erudite <laughs> up until you picked the star sapphire. I know. But <clears throat> all of that aside, if you want to know a lot like Rebecca does, you can head over to gemstones.com, our new website, and learn about these gemstones, those gemstones, and all sorts of gemstones. And tell us in the comments which one was your favorite. We actually didn't cover all of the optical phenomena that are out there, so let us know if there are some others that you want us to talk about. Don't forget to like, subscribe, ring that bell so you don't miss out on our future videos. Thanks for watching.